Hey guys, so in this video we're going over Ray Dalio's new article, New Paradigm Shift. And this video is going to be a little different than normal. I'm, I don't want to say it's going to be like a podcast, um, but it's going to be just straightforward. We're going to go over things um, so you could do other things however you wish. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. Um, so you could do things if you want and just listen. Or you could look at my pretty face or ugly face. You could debate that as well. Um, but this is exactly what we're going over in this video is that Ray Dalio, one of the biggest, if not the biggest hedge fund manager in the world, just released an article going over a new paradigm shift. And we're going to be talking about two factors with this. First one is what is a paradigm shift? How is it like seen in history? and everything like that, but also um, what's possibly coming up and how to prepare for something like that. So that's what we're going into. Uh, so if you guys are new, I'm Nick, Real Life Money, subscribe if you want to. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to be talking about what is a new paradigm shift? Well, basically you could think of life in general goes through cycles. And so does the economy. What Ray Dalio explains, and I'll leave links in the description to this article that you could check out. Uh, he released it like a couple days ago, and it's on LinkedIn. And it took me like around an hour to read through. I'm a slow reader, but I read through that and took some notes. I got them all right here for you. It's all scribbled down. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm. Uh, just jogging my memory. Um, so it, it's especially a billionaire is coming out with an article. I would definitely recommend actually reading it. Uh, very interesting ideas that he goes through. So the idea of paradigm shift is that life in the economy has cycles. And interestingly enough, it seems to ha happen like every decade has its own cycle, which is interesting to think about. So that's the first thing that he goes into. He goes over like each decade um, and how it might start out with like a bunch of growth, everything's good, but then the next cycle is basically the complete opposite. You know, a lot of people might think growth is going to continue forever and it usually doesn't. Um, so he goes through each individual decade starting from the 1920s. So you could see that. Obviously, in the 1920s, it was the Roaring Twenties. Things were good. And then in the 30s was the complete opposite. That was the Great Depression. Um, so that's just one example. And that goes throughout history. You know, then World War II starts. And then inflation. And it kind of goes up and down. So recently, uh, we could think back to, obviously, like, dot-com bubble. So the 90s, there was a bunch of growth, and then the dot-com bubble exploded, and then it went back down. And then the next section would be 2008, 2009 is the next burst. So between like the year 2000 to 2010, kind of, was the decline. Now, the situation that we're in now is 2010 to 2020, also something interesting to think of if these cycles do take let's say a decade on average we're ending our decade it's 2019 so you know we've had great growth since 2000 not <coughs> excuse me 2008 2009 and you know we're coming possibly toward the end of the cycle so what's going to happen then we could have a downturn and that's exactly what he goes into. So during these shifts, these new paradigm shifts, there is a large transfer of wealth. So when you really think about it, you know, 2008, you know, the economy crashed and everything. And when it started to rebound, a lot of millionaires were created because those who own assets benefited the most. If you didn't own assets, you know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, have no saving whatsoever, you really didn't gain much. You might be like the same spot you were in 2008. But if you are 
an investor or an asset holder or you know like own a business or something like that you gain tremendous wealth during that time and right now we're seeing that huge wealth gap now that brings problems people start questioning uh, capitalism Ray Dalio goes into you know this possible issue that might be coming up uh, anti-capitalism and kind of focused on socialism because people might see look at that huge wealth gap obviously capitalism doesn't work and then I mean there's a bunch of whatever you kind of wish to call them but there's like democratic socialists that are running now um, and history kind of shows socialism doesn't work um, but that doesn't mean that capitalism is perfect either um, but you could definitely see when assets increase the the wealth gap dramatically diverges from each other now here's the part that kind of stinks no one really knows when this shift is going to happen I've heard so many different like how long bull markets last I've heard five years I've heard ten years in certain comments on YouTube I've heard 20 years I don't know where that number comes from but that obviously means like there's no set time horizon or limit where like bull markets ending now and here's when a bear market starts it like you cannot determine it's starting to happen now it could happen in a year or even two years now here's the thing right now central banks which is a big thing right now is interest rates so what central banks or the Fed what they try to do is they try to stimulate the economy so what they've been doing it for a while I think it started in like 1920s or so maybe before that uh, but the idea of quantitative easing the government tries to purchase assets to stimulate the economy well unfortunately because we've been doing it for a while each time we go into more QE the effects on the economy are are weaker each time we try to do that so for example you know we've been dropping an interest rate well actually it's been zero interest rates for years now since well not now but it's been zero for like eight years then we started to increase interest rates so now we're around like maybe two percent or whatnot so now people are questioning should we be dropping interest rates back down so w one thing that people might assume is similar to 2008 when interest rates are going down there's a bunch of growth after that or during that because the Fed is going to be pumping these assets you know they're going to be buying a bunch of bonds treasuries let's say well if the effect is lessening then the result of QE could be completely different than what's intended and that's one thing that Ray Dalio was going over another thing which apparently is not a huge problem right now uh, but it will be is the huge debts we're carrying a ridiculous amount of debt and when there is something unsustainable that is growing and that could be debts that could be the stock market that could be really anything if something's growing exponentially unstable that can occur for a long amount of time so the problem is now you know, I'm looking at my notes but um the problem is that these debts could be come well not could be they are coming due so we have a ridiculous amount of debt how are we going to pay for those so when real interest rates are pushed so low the debt holders won't want to hold it and that makes complete sense uh, what Ray Dalio was talking about is that especially now interest rates are low and they were even at zero on top of that there are even other countries that have negative interest rates which is really messed up to think about because let's say you have money in your bank right and there's a negative interest rate you're paying the bank to hold your money 
so if you deposit, let's say, I don't know, a hundred dollars, and I don't know, next year you come back and you want to withdraw it, now it's like ninety-five dollars. No, why would you keep it at the bank? That doesn't make sense. So also there is a large need for money to fund liabilities which will contribute to a big squeeze, Ray Dalio was saying. I'm kind of like paraphrasing. Uh, I was, I'm just going over like big, um, big concepts that he was stating on. Um, but when there's a huge amount of money that we need to be paying because there's large debts, that's an issue and can cause even other issues. So it could be like more of a domino effect. So because there's not enough money, because there's such a large amount of debt, then that could increase taxes. Now, if you've been following uh, Donald Trump's plan that he did have a rate cut, uh, it kind of benefited corporate America. So corporate rates right now are the lowest it's been in a while. Well, if we have to repay these debts, then you have to raise those taxes so the government gets more revenue so they could pay those debts. So, you know, if, if you're thinking that tax rates are going to be always this low, most likely it, it won't be. Um, just because these people can't apparently handle their own cash flow. Now, with these low rates, of course, there's a bunch of problems with these low rates. There is a problem in the retirement community. Because usually when you're retired, you want to have safer investments, right? You won't kind of hold more bonds. You might hold more, I don't know, CDs or something like that, annuities even, whatever you're really into, but more safe investments. Well, if safe investments are giving you low or zero percent, then people who are trying to retire and get income from that are kind of screwed. Like they're not in the best situation, so they would have to kind of put their money at a little bit more risk just to get more money to survive. Um, so that could be another issue that could um, cause more of a domino effect that could go on. So, yeah, like we said, investors will want to hold other assets just because if they're not paying anything, why would they hold them? So, as like we were saying before, with quantitative easing, as interest rates decline, pr uh, present value of assets increase. So there's an inverse relationship there. So, like we saw before, when interest rates declined, there was a bunch of buying into treasuries by the federal government. That inflated prices of bonds, of stocks, of basically everything, of real estate. Well, and this was a very interesting idea that Ray stated, is that in reality, the future returns are pulled to the present. So right now, there's a bunch of good present returns. Returns have been good in, you know, currently. However, that is because we're taking some of the future returns that we will be getting and we're taking them now. And that's an issue because if you're taking them now, that means future earnings are going to be less because you already earned it, if that makes sense. But that was a very interesting thought that Ray had, and that kind of got me thinking. So we went over the idea of diminishing effect of quantitative easing. Uh, will debts be struggled to be paid? Yes, most likely money will go to debts and not assets. That's the thing as well. When because there's so much money to be paid in debts, there wouldn't be any money left over to invest or put into assets because they're all being paid to the debts. So that could also trigger 
the paradigm shift because there's no more flow into assets, there's flow into debt. So that was kind of like, first we started with the history of different paradigm shifts between like different decades. Then we kind of went into how we might be getting into the next paradigm shift, how things are or could be changing in the near future. Um, so for example, like there are some countries that have negative rates, like we mentioned before. So if our rates go negative, it would be eating into the principle, which isn't good. Right now, there's an inverted yield curve, if you haven't realized. Apparently, it's not a huge deal, but it is. And let me look, explain a little bit of that. Basically, the, the idea, let's say I'm loaning you money. I give you money for a month, and I'm just going to make things even. I give you money for a month, and I want a 2% interest rate. Fine. Well, right now... I could also loan you money for 10 years and the interest rate would still be 2%. That doesn't make any sense because the longer the amount of time, because it's locked up and you could be using your money for something else, there's more risk. So you would want more return. So normally, longer term bonds give a higher yield than shorter term bonds. But right now they are not. It is flat. And that's another issue. Previous recessions were, I don't want to say triggered, but when this happened previously of negative interest, not negative interest rates, sorry, uh, inverted yield curves, that predicted a recession coming and that happened multiple times obviously there are more factors than that just this um, but this happened in the Great Depression also the Great Recession and right now inverted yield curve is happening so could that predict the next paradigm shift so could it happen could have it started already could it happen next year or you know 2020 or 2021 or something like that um, so that's one huge um, factor and concern that we have to look out for now what's very interesting that Ray Dalio has is he created the idea of an all-weather portfolio so this is kind of going into the idea of how to prepare for a possible paradigm shift now he has the idea of, you have been wrong before, which means you will probably be wrong again in the future. If you don't believe you're going to be wrong at some point, then you're, you're kind of delusional. Um, so instead of trying to pick like what's the right thing to do, Ray Dalio has this great idea of an all-weather portfolio. Now, if you guys are interested, I do have another video going into detail of this strategy I'll leave the link in the description but basically the idea is having everything having assets or investments that do good during growth having assets that do good during inflation or deflation or not growth so no matter what's happening happening in the economy you have an asset that's benefiting from it um, so that's definitely a, a good strategy to go by. So what he was leaning into is that we need a better balanced portfolio. So toward the end of the article, sorry if, it's, if this is a little bit longer than usual, but it's very interesting to me anyway. Um, so toward the end of the article, he was getting into kind of the idea behind his all-weather portfolio is that if you hold a bunch of, let's just say stocks, because a lot of people just own stocks, maybe a little bit of bonds, but that's about it. Because stocks are more risky than bonds, 
if the market crashes, basically your entire portfolio is going to crash. So that's why it has to be risk adjusted, which is the idea behind the all weather. And one idea to assist you in diversifying your portfolio a little more, he goes into the idea of gold. So gold is, now a lot of people do not like gold. I know that. I know Warren Buffett doesn't care for gold because it's not an income producing asset. It's not like a business that has earnings. It's just gold and that's it. However, the good thing about gold is that it's a hedge against the economy. It's a hedge against fiat currency, which I forgot to mention. Right now we're, in a, we're on a fiat currency system. So we just mentioned the idea of gold. Back in 1970s, early 70s, or well before that technically, money used to be backed by gold. So if you had like a hundred bucks, you could technically exchange that hundred dollars and you would get a hundred dollars worth of gold. It was backed by something, an actual physical asset. Well, in the 70s, that was completely changed. Gold was no longer backing the US dollar, which is a fiat currency. You know what, uh, you know what was backing the US dollar? That's right, absolutely nothing. So what that did is that sparked inflation of the dollar the central bank was able to print all this money, which devalued the valuation of the dollar. That's why things are so much more expensive now than back then. A quick example would be houses are like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars when your grandparents might have spent like ten, twenty thousand dollars on a house. That's the idea of devaluing uh, the US dollar and also inflation. So that's the issue. Right now the dollar is on a downward trend. Eventually it would most likely have to hit zero. So what Ray Dalio was talking about, when you own gold, that's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against the dollar because when the dollar declines, gold holds its value. It's been holding its value for centuries, thousands of years. And that's really the only real money in the world. People realize that gold has value. And that's why he believes to, in, I don't want to say invest, uh, but at least to hold a certain amount of gold in your portfolio. Not to like, buy a bunch of gold, like a hundred percent gold portfolio. No, but if you do have a small portion, uh, again, going into the all weather portfolio link in the description for that video, but his estimated holdings that you should have in your portfolio is around seven and a half percent. Some people say between like five and 10%. Some people only have like a couple of percent. Um, but if you have anything in gold, even silver, that diversifies your portfolio even more. So I was like entranced by this article. Uh, it was extremely fascinating because usually when you look at history, it might not specifically and precisely repeat itself, however it rhymes. Things usually happen over and over again. Different cycles happen different paradigm shifts happen and we could possibly be going through one right now. You know, if they drop interest rates that could spike inflation and who knows, you know, like things that you normally buy could raise in price drastically. You know, I think it was like Germany or something like that. It was in history where they had like wheelbarrows of currency to buy a loaf of bread. That's hyperinflation. Hopefully we don't get to that extent, but if there is inflation, things are going to get more expensive. 
and guess what so will gold because you would need more dollars to buy gold again leading toward the idea of Ray Dalio holding a bit of your portfolio in gold so I'm gonna start winding down for you guys a little bit if you have any questions comments concerns please let me know in the description it this what's going on right now is extremely interesting but also concerning and the fact that Ray Dalio has put out an article for us to learn and comprehend and possibly benefit from during these times might as well learn a little bit that's why I wanted to do this video um, so I just wanted to get the main ideas out there Tell me what you guys think also of this video. Is it long and drawn out or something like that? It's a little bit different of what I usually do. Normally it's kind of more snappy. Um, but I just wanted to throw ideas out there of what's, what's concerning going on right now. And this could definitely be a way to help you out a bit, kind of help you understand. Uh, a lot of things are going on, could be a little confusing but definitely, again, check out the article. You could definitely learn a lot. My next video, I'm going back to how I usually do it. Maybe let me know what you guys think of this kind of setup or format. But I'll be going into other strategies in a stock market recession or just any type of recession, how you could try to benefit from that because there are a bunch of different strategies. Um, but overall, Ray Dalio's all-weather portfolio, it's been proven that he's been doing very well with it. And I learned that from uh, Tony Robbins' book, Money Master of the Game. That's where I really learned a lot about it. If you're interested in that book, check it out at the library. I have a link in the description if you like. But just... Like, I think this could be an opportunity of a lifetime, honestly, guys. And that's why I'm, one, talking a lot about it, but also why I really want to put it out there. It could really change your life. And if you miss this opportunity, you could get badly hurt from it. Or if you take advantage, you could even benefit from it. So, hopefully, this went over the idea of the article, a little bit drawn out. I mean, the article is long, so I just went over the main points. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit me with a thumbs up if you like this format and what I did here. Um, but I would definitely appreciate it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.